Welcome back to the channel. For those of you guys that are new here, my name's Dr. Frank. I'm a recovering addict from nicotine, energy drinks, THC, and adult media content. And I'm the founder of Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching, a company that helps people quit these addictions. In today's brief video, I want to talk about two things. I want to tell you guys a little bit more about the state of my health when I was going through these addictions, especially towards the end, because it got really, really nasty. And then I want to give advice for those of you who are living with someone who continues to vape, continues to smoke cigarettes, continues to smoke weed, even though you're trying to quit, because I've had a lot of people ask me to talk about that. So first and foremost, by the end of my journey with addiction, and I just want to paint a clear picture on this, I had been drinking one Monster Energy drink a day from the age of like 16, 17, all the way up to right around 27, 28 years old. Okay, I would drink one a day sugar-free or like the really low sugar ones before they had the sugar-free ones. I would chew tobacco. I've chewed tobacco since I was probably about, again, 16, 17 years old. I would uh, skull mint pouches, citrus pouches, wintergreen pouches. And I would do two pouches at a time every time. And it wouldn't be uncommon for me to go through a tin of tobacco a day. Usually I would chew three times a day. So like morning, afternoon, and evening. And that's a lot of nicotine. I'm not a really big guy. I only weighed about 140 to 150 pounds. And that that's a lot of nicotine. Now, I also, along the process of this, not from the beginning, but once I got into college out of high school, I want to say midway through college, I picked up vaping right around the time Juul came out. And my intention was to quit chewing tobacco, but all that happened was when I couldn't chew tobacco, I would vape or vice versa. When I couldn't vape, I would simply chew tobacco. So we have the energy drinks. One monster a day keeps the doctor away. We have the chewing tobacco products now. We have the Juul vape. So now we have nicotine salt products. And I'm, I'm combining all these throughout the day. I also worked at Vitamin Shop. So I was really big into pre-workout products. Typically what I would do is I would take like a pre-workout product in the morning and then I would drink an energy drink at lunchtime or, you know, chewing tobacco and an energy drink would actually replace my lunch. That would be lunch, nicotine and caffeine. Now, as time went on, I eventually got into, this is probably around the age of 23, I got into smoking uh, weed and it started with dry herb, like we would smoke blunts, you know, cut up a cigarette, mix it with tobacco and weed. And that was usually what we would smoke, bong hits, volcano vaporizer hits, PAX, PAX vaporizer unit hits, all that stuff. But towards the end of my journey uh, with weed, maybe in the last six months of use, I started to use the black market THC cartridges. Now, I get a mixture of things from my plug. Sometimes they truly were medical grade carts. More often than not, though, they were black market THC products. Now, at this point in time, I've been addicted and on and off of different substances from the age of, you know, 16 years old all the way up to the age of 28. And there's been periods of time in here where I like would quit Monster, I'd quit pre-workout, right? And I was binge drinking a lot during this time too because I was in college. So we'd go out drinking pretty heavily three, four nights a week, not sleeping at all throughout my college experience at all. No sleep really for the seven years I was in college. Now, here's, I felt pretty good actually for a while and then around 25 years old, I started to feel kind of sick. Like I was getting different types of health problems. Like I was developing headaches. I was getting stomach problems. I had a lot of pain. And I'm going to say why that is in my muscles and my bones. And it was actually later determined that I had hypercalcemia in my blood, um, which was resulting in osteoporosis. And that was a really scary time in my life. At this point, I was probably 27, 28 years old. And, you know, I started with my primary care doctor. He was worried that I might have had, honest to God, some type of cancer or some disease of my parathyroid glands. So they sent me to a big clinic here in New York, Roswell. But obviously, I didn't have cancer or anything. And at this point, I'm like, like I said, like 27, 28 years old now, probably. 
and my health is really in in a bad type of way. I mean, my it started with my eye twitching, but then like my bicep would twitch, my muscles in my stomach would twitch, like my abs, and then I'd lay down at night and I would get like twitching and burning throughout my legs. And this was a uh, neuropathy. I was getting like a nerve pain throughout my legs. And I'll explain why I think all this happened in a little bit, or rather why I was told all this happened. So I kind of knew deep down that like the combination of nicotine, weed, THC, not sleeping, I was working like three or four jobs at this time. I would honest to God, start work at 5 a.m., And I would end work at 7 p.m., honestly, close to six days a week, at least five days a week. And it sucked because here I was consuming all this nicotine. That's a stimulant. Then I would smoke weed to kind of slow myself down or drink alcohol to slow myself down. That's a depressant. And and my sleep was all messed up. So I would pound energy drinks or pre-workout just to wake up during the day just to get going And I was stuck, but then I'd be wired from that, so then I'd smoke more weed at night to go to bed. And this was this cycle that I was in. This was the the triad of addiction, nicotine, energy drinks, weed, and then, of course, adult media content was thrown into this whole mixture as well, too. And here I am one day sitting in a neurologist office. They already determined I had osteoporosis. I had really low bone density. And they think the amount of caffeine I was drinking combined with nicotine intake was like actually leaching calcium from my bones um, or disrupting the absorption of calcium. And they they believe that combined with some genetic predisposition uh, led to the development of osteoporosis. On my blood work, I also had really low testosterone I had uh, hyperglycemia. I wasn't like pre-diabetic, but I was borderline pre-diabetic, which isn't shocking because nicotine raises your blood sugar levels, your blood glucose levels, um, and I was doing that kind of all day long. Again, the, the energy drinks were sugar-free, but just because they're sugar-free, it can still raise blood glucose levels. And you guys can only imagine, like I looked terrible 24-7. I was pale as hell. I could I could barely get off the couch some days. Like honestly, I I it, it felt like like I I was borderline during the day having feelings where I could just pass out. Like I just had to lay down. Like parts of my body would go numb, things would tingle in my body, my hands, my feet, my leg, and I would just feel like I had to fall asleep. So, I was going to see different neurologists and they were looking into things like MS. I was getting tested for that. Uh, they, they were looking for a whole bunch of different autoimmune diseases. And one day I'm sitting in a neurologist office and I'm drinking a monster while I'm sitting there, like, you know, shaking. And he started to ask me about my lifestyle. And he was like, Hey, how many of those do you drink a day? I was like, Oh, just one. And he was like, Oh, that's not terrible. You know, there's, there's uh, more caffeine in a Starbucks coffee. That's not terrible. It was like, what, anything else? He was like, do you smoke? I was like, why chew tobacco? I was like, oh, okay. And they asked, do you smoke? I was like, well, no, not really, but I do vape. No, okay. Now, uh, anything else? Do you smoke weed? This guy actually also is a medical cannabis doctor. I'm like, yeah, I smoke, you know, at night the cartridges to go to bed. It helps with my sleep and my anxiety. Oh, okay. How, how often do you sleep? Well, not a lot because, you know, I work all these different jobs. And at this point, he was like, listen, man. I don't think you have MS. He was like, we, we can continue with testing to make sure. But he was like, you, you are, you're doing this to yourself, essentially. He was like, to, to be approaching 30 years old and thinking your body can tolerate behaviors that you were doing when you were 16, 17, 18 years old is absurd. And he, and he told me, he was like, you are headed for a major health crisis. We don't know what's going to happen to you. We don't know what it's going to look like. But, but you have to stop. And I didn't. At that point, it took me another few months to actually quit after that doctor's visit. And the threat was what they were going to do next was uh, nerve conduction studies. And they wanted to test literally all my extremities. Like they wanted to, so basically they, they pierce your arms with like these needles to test the nerve conductivity traveling through your legs, how your nerves are working. And this is a way to like check for, other like muscular musculoskeletal disorders or rule things out like MS. 
And I didn't want to go through that. So I noticed right off the bat when I would drink a monster energy drink, like that would grit or pre-workout or caffeine in general, the twitching would get like out of control. So that was the first thing that I quit. And that was really hard. Like I relapsed a number of times because I would crave that sweetness. I would crave that what I thought energy when in all reality, all I was doing was putting my central nervous system into overdrive constantly into this constant state of fight or flight just to then crash down my nervous system again. That's what I was doing. So I was constantly going to fight or flight and then crashing it. And that was messing with cortisol levels, blood sugar levels, testosterone levels. Like no wonder why I couldn't get up off the couch. No wonder why I felt so bad. Some really simple advice someone once gave me, if you want to feel better, stop doing things that make you feel bad. I tell that to myself now on a daily basis, it feels like. I'm constantly having to remind myself of that. So I quit those. And now at the same time, here I am with the black market THC products, having early symptoms of psychosis. And I was in the first stage of cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. So here I am, I'm nauseous all the time, can barely eat food. At this point, I've lost, you know, a solid 20 pounds probably. Like I'm way too thin and people are constantly telling me I'm too thin. And here I am with these visual disturbances, which I thought were just like a part of aging, you know, and the doctors are looking at me, the eye doctors, and they're like, dude, you don't really have an eye deficit, maybe a little bit, like we'll give you glasses. And I felt like that helped, but it really didn't. Um, Because what I was going through was actually like early stages of psychosis, probably from all these black market THC products. And guys, energy drink consumption alone or pre-workout drink consumption alone can predispose you to things like psychosis. Uh, Combine that with the lack of sleep I had. and, And this is a really bad type of way. So now... Here's where my health is at, hypercalcemia, osteoporosis, hypertension, high blood pressure, stomach problems, headaches, myalgia, searing muscle pain, neuropathy, nerve pain, okay, early symptoms of CHS, cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, and and early, like, a light case of psychosis. Now, I have to quit all this stuff go through detox, put my body under more stress now because I'm detoxing. And now I got to face all the withdrawal symptoms from each of these days, caffeine withdrawal, nicotine withdrawal, THC withdrawal, which I was heavily addicted to and dependent upon. Okay. Um, Nicotine salt withdrawal from Juul, right? And then in the meantime of all this, I decide, you know what? I should probably quit watching adult media content too, which has its own set of withdrawal. And I was, I was glad that that doctor identified what was going on and that someone finally called me out on it, but there was no guidance. There was no, like, there was no help. Like realistically looking back, I probably could have qualified for a rehab facility, but everyone thought I was a joke. People still think it's a joke when I say I help people quit nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content, the triad of addiction. I don't think people understand the severity of dopamine and and what this does to a person's brain in combination with one another. I don't think people understand what this does to cortisol levels and blood sugar levels. I don't think people understand how serious of a detox and withdrawal process this is. And I think it's a shame. I I really do because I wouldn't wish what I went through on anyone. That was a horrible experience. And I was a guy who pretty much always thought like, well, you know, at least I'm not doing Coke. At least I'm not doing, you know, uh, a bunch of Adderall. At least I'm not taking ecstasy at least, you know, but at the end of the day that the health consequences, the physically and mentally of this addiction were, were serious. They were serious consequences. And I just, I hope you guys get help. The, you know, the new year is coming up. I offer one-on-one coaching to help people with this stuff. You can find a link for it in the pinned comment in the video description. Now is the time. Don't wait till January 1st. If you're trying to make a change 
Sign up for the coaching one-on-one. Sign up for the group, group coaching. Get the free course. Okay, guys, make the change now. Okay, I know it costs money, but you're, you're already spending that money. And guys, this cost me a lot of money going to all these different doctors, trying to find answers, missing time at work. This was expensive it, and, and it held me back in life. Like it really s- screwed me, this combination of behaviors. And you know the worst part? You don't feel it. That's why it's so insidious until you're 25, 30 years old. 35 years old. That's the most common age of people to call our offices seeking help somewhere between 25 and 40 because that's when your body really starts to let you know, hey, a lot of damage has been done and now I'm going to make sure that you know that. I'm going to make sure that you feel that. Guys, I, I don't have enough time in this video to make uh, a segment on what to do if you live with a family member. I'm going to make a whole separate video on that, but just a little tip, you have to be the role model for them, okay? If they are not thinking about quitting or are in denial, they will not pursue quitting until they see that positive energy start flowing out of you. So if you're trying to quit smoking weed and your husband still smokes, you have to be the one to do it. If, if, you, if you want to quit, you have to be the one to quit because it's that positive energy and that change that they're going to see in you, not in the acute withdrawal, not in the post-acute withdrawal, and in the long-term portions of recovery that's going to inspire them. And that's really the bottom line. I'll make a more detailed video on that later today, and maybe I'll drop it tonight. All right, guys. I'll see you later.